Welcome, 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 welcome. Are we good? We're good. Welcome to a conversation that you and I get to have right about here. And we're gonna be focusing on the first nine posts that you have on any social media platform. Now, even if you're not just starting off for the first time, and maybe you wanna like revive your current account, or maybe you just wanna look at your account and be like, listen, I know my account needs a whole tune up, so why don't we start from scratch? This is gonna be a great conversation. Like this is us having a conversation around nine posts that could revive an account or start an account. So we're gonna be titling this, your first nine posts on social media. Now, when I say your first, it doesn't have to be post one through nine, it could be today's the day I make a declaration to come correct to what I want to do with my social media marketing. So let's focus on these nine posts. So let's just say you've created a new account for social media for your business. Now what? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Instagram as, a, as an example, but this could actually work Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok. So we're going to be just looking at this as an, in the form of a context. So. I'm gonna talk about my best tips for growing your account on social media. In this particular case, my best tips for growing your Instagram account. Now the first nine posts, I'm just gonna be real, they don't matter. Even if you're one of those people who are like, I make the big bold declaration that today I am starting over on Instagram and it's gonna be right, guess what? Your first nine posts don't matter. And that should be super freeing for you. You should be able to take a step back and be like, listen, the people who are actually most likely gonna care and want to support me, it might be my friends and family. You can't mess it up. So what I want us to do is release ourselves from any sort of expectations. Release yourself from unrealistic expectations. Oftentimes we say when we go into something new, these first nine posts, well, they're just gonna be gangbusters. I'm gonna be posting with consistency. If Jasmine says nine posts, I'm gonna post once a day for nine days and watch me come out of the gate, bang, 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 which is great. But what's your realistic expectation attached to your actions. Just this morning, I sent a direct message to a woman by the name of Janessa. She's on the inside of Social Curator and she said, Jasmine, I have a hard time being patient. What advice do you have for me? And I said, baby, I'm gonna give you the same advice I gave myself this morning. I am not responsible for the outcome. I am responsible for the work. I am not responsible for the results or how quickly they happen. I am responsible for the work and what is meant for me will find me. I cannot have an unrealistic expectation set that these nine posts, watch out, nine posts, nine new clients in nine days, who dis? Where did that even come from? We're making up this idealized result and then expecting it to happen as if it's an on our timeline. It doesn't work that way. So what all I want us to do for the rest of this conversation is release expectations from an unrealistic outcome. Release the idea that it must turn out this way, the way that we have imagined it. Why? Because we're a special snowflake and everything we wish will just come true overnight. Life doesn't work like that nor will growing your business. Okay, if you haven't tuned away by this point of the conversation, buckle up, we're gonna keep on going. This is the perfect opportunity for you to start over and we're gonna talk about a distinct methodology that you can use over and over again to decrease overwhelm, save time, and get your results. So on the inside of Social Curator, if you've been around the block with me for a minute, you know that this, this ain't new but I continue to repeat it because oftentimes I see people start and then depart from this. This right here is a sheer, a sh sheer, a surefire way to start getting to where you wanna go. Caption category number one is behind the scenes. Show people what is going on behind the scenes of your work, how you package your goods, how you prep for a day, how do you set up for a client consultation, what kind of thank you notes are you including? People care about that stuff. Another caption category that you can be focusing on is your why. Simon Sinek said it best, people don't buy what you sell, they buy why you sell it. When's the last time you explained to somebody why you're a videographer? When's the last time that you explained why you built your Montessori school? Why you got, became a hairstylist? Why you became a public speaker? When people know why you started, it has a fundamental shift in how they receive the content that you are sharing. Personal insights. Listen, people are actually, honestly, interested in how you spend your weekend, how you invest in yourself, the types of classes that you're watching. They want to know what are you as a person pouring back into your business. Encouragement. This is going to be a great caption category because oftentimes people go to social media to be 
social. And there's a higher likelihood of somebody engaging with somebody else on the back of getting an encouraging piece of feedback, insight, tutorials, education, something that makes them feel, I saved time, I got smarter, I learned something new, my day is brighter because of this meme with a puppy and a baby and a slice of pizza. It's crazy. We're building conversations in a personal way to drive more business. We have another caption category called About Me. This is a great way for you to add personal insights, like how did you learn lessons along the way in your business that has impacted how you're serving your customers? People, specifically new customers, have no idea how to contextualize your business offer, because I hate to break the news to you. You're not the only relationship coach. You're not the only graphic designer in the world, and you're not the only dog walker in the world. So what we want to know as prospective customers is what about you or what about your team makes you tick? So that when I send over my credit card, I know who I'm working with and why. Let's chat about the benefits of what it is you do. People don't know what they get in relation to buying from you. And I know it seems silly. You're like, I sell essential oils. They get essential oils. Right, but we have to understand that people aren't buying essential oils. They're buying a transformation. They're buying what they get, not a vial of oil. People don't go to a, a swim coach for swim lessons. They go to a swim coach to learn how to swim. They get the transformation, they get the result. How often are we reminding our clients that there is a result at the end of it, not just a transaction in the middle? Last and final caption category that we could be repeating again and again would be to showcase your product or service. Now, I've saved this one till the end because business owners are really great at this one. Oh, they just love talking about their products. They love talking about how their, you know, their coaching sessions or their fitness workouts or their meal plans. Oh, they love talking about how it's on sale, how there's free shipping, how there's a buy one, get one, how it's so great for somebody to buy. Great. But if all you're doing is talking about the purpose of buying, people feel like they're just being sold to. There's not a relationship on the back end of it. Okay, came out a little bit hot, but I'm just laying the framework. Now, the good news is I gave you seven caption categories, and all you have to do is repeat those caption categories. If you want to keep it as simple as possible and you just want to keep that flow seven days after seven days after seven days, go right ahead. If you want to start testing like, hey, Jasmine, I've been doing this a little bit a, a, a while and people are really responding to the behind the scenes caption category. Is it OK for me to do two or three behind the scenes posts day after day? Eh, yeah. As long as people are talking back and engaging, that is the market, a.k.a. your future customers responding and telling you what they want to see more of. So your first nine posts, once you're kind of in there and you figured out this is working for me, then it's time to get consistent. Knowing what to do and doing what to do are two different things. Oftentimes people watch a, a video on YouTube or Facebook or, or watch an IGTV and they're kind of like, wow, I just feel so much better that I know what to do. But knowing what to do means nothing if you don't actually do the thing you need to do. And what I am telling you, regardless if you follow the seven capture categories or not, is be consistent. Now, I'm not going to be the type of coach who's going to tell you, well, consistency looks this way for everybody. Heck no. I won't tell you that you need to post three times a day every single day for the rest of your life. I would never say that. I would never even say that you need to post once a day in order for you to grow. I wouldn't say that. I might give suggestions, but you get to determine your level of consistency. If for you, it's three times a week and be like, listen, I have kids. This is my side hustle. I have a full-time job and I'm a caretaker. I could really commit to three. Great. I clap you up. I am so excited for you. But let me tell you, if you commit to three and you stick with it for one week and the next week you fell off the train, that's okay. Get back on whenever you're ready. But I'm going to tell you, you set your own terms to consistency. And if you don't stick to your levels of consistency, I don't judge. I simply wonder, did you want it bad enough? Was it a priority? I'm gonna riff here for a second, Christina. There's one thing that I want to point out is that whenever you feel that there is something that comes up for you, oftentimes from business owners, I hear, I don't have enough time. I don't know what to do. I am really overwhelmed. Nobody understands what I'm going through. And you're right. 
You're right. You might not have enough time. I might not understand what you're going through. But instead of saying, I don't have time, I'm overwhelmed, or you don't know what I'm going through, how about I'm going to give a suggestion? I'm going to invite you to say, that's not important to me. Every time you say, I don't have time, how about you switch and say, that's not important to me. So if, you know, on a Tuesday night, you realize, man, I haven't posted on Instagram and I'm just so tired. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't have time. I can't post on Instagram. What if you were to say, I'm not going to post on Instagram because it's not important to me. And if you hear yourself say that it's not important and you're like, I don't believe that to be true, then the only option you have is to post. Now, if you say that's not important to me and you're like, it's just not, great, not a problem. But the minute that we start indexing, I don't have time versus it's not important, we're taking personal ownership and responsibility for our action or our inaction and we remain in control. I don't want a business owner to feel victimized. I'm behind the curve. It's out to get me. I, I, don't, I can't do what other people are doing. Own it. Own that you can't because it's not important. And if it is, then we modify and change our behaviors. Oh, where am I coming in from? Dang. Oh, okay. So there are thousands of people, business owners, who do what you do. There are hundreds of thousands of people who do what it is you do. There are wedding planners who focus just on micro weddings, just like you. There are hundreds of thousands of personal trainers who help moms get fit, just like the way you do. There are hundreds of thousands of bakers who bake cinnamon rolls just like you. So if we realize that there are hundreds of thousands of people who do hundreds of thousands of other things and that we aren't, despite our best efforts, a special snowflake when it comes to just the type of business we have, then the question becomes, how do you position yourself as an expert in the field? How do you say I'm different than hundreds of thousands of other people who do the exact same thing we do? Because we have to understand that you can't be all things to all people. We have to give ourselves the permission to attract the right customer. So when I first started my career as a photographer, my very first career, the very first business I ever started, I'm like, I'm going to become a photographer. And I have a camera and basically I'm a photographer superhero. I just had a cape. Like where there is something to photograph, I will be there. It, do you <laughs> have a camera? We'll shoot. Do you smile? I'll shoot you. Like I wanted just to shoot. And if you had a credit card, I even accepted checks. I'm not going to tell you how many check, people wrote me a check and he then bounced. Not going to go there. I took any form of payment. And then I realized that I was tired and frustrated because people weren't valuing my work. They would not show up to shoots. They wouldn't pay me on time. They wouldn't say thank you after I shot it. And I thought to myself, wow, this isn't good. And then I realized it wasn't them. It was me. I wasn't clearly defining who my offer was for. I wasn't saying that I do what I do because of my why. I do what I do, so I'm gonna show you behind the scenes. I do what I wanna do, and even though I'm struggling, I'm gonna offer some encouragement. I am gonna hear and share testimonials of people who actually went out of their way to find me as a photographer as opposed to somebody else. I was stepping into that very thing. So if we understand that we can't be all things to all people, then our only objective is to attract a small group of people who will then become people who evangelize, who talk about our business, who are like, this, this is the business that's for me. And what we need to do is we need to give people a way to connect with us. I did not say we expect people to connect with us for any other reason. All I said was we need to give people a way to connect with us. If you're not getting engagement, chances are, are you giving them something to engage with? So you are what sets apart your business from others. Now, this is the part where people get very annoyed, they disagree, they don't believe, and that's fine. All I'm gonna tell you is what works for me and then what I've seen works for other businesses on the inside of Social Curator where I have had the honor and privilege of ushering more than 35,000 people through a program. Now, you might say, well, that's not enough data and analytics. Maybe it's not. But what I'm going to tell you is that even if a business didn't have a, some, somebody's name attached to it, even if it was a mortgage brokerage, even if it was a lawn care facility, even if it was a fitness studio, that what I am clearly telling you from my perspective, you could agree or disagree, is that when somebody's face or name or names were attached to it, people cared more. Because I can choose to go to a Pilates studio. There 
I live in Newport Beach. You can't drive one block without seeing a Pilates studio. So if I'm looking for a Pilates class and I start searching Yelp, Google, Instagram for Newport Beach Pilates studio, I have choices. What's gonna draw me to one Pilates studio? Well, the teachers, the coaches, the owner, testimonials from other people who had lifestyle transformation by the way of Pilates, or do I really wanna hear about how you have another sale? There's a product sale at your Pilates studio. Am I gonna sign up to go? I don't know. Am I gonna be more inclined because I understand the owner's journey, the team's journey, and the teacher's journey? Most likely. This is what I've seen again and again. So now more than ever, and I can get into the stats and I can get into the statistics and that could be a totally different class, but I just need you to trust that what I'm saying and then you could cross check it on Google. Cross check the amount of millennials, the next largest, biggest, most dominating purchasers online. See their connection to wanting to invest in a business where they know more about the business, that they're not being sold to, but they're equally invested in the business. Check those stats because they're skyrocketing. So think about it this way. When you're, don't, okay, outside of business, I am not trying to convince you on a theory, okay? All I'm gonna ask you is think about the last time you opened your phone to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Just think about this. Now remember, it's 8, 12 p.m. You had a long day, finished dinner, kind of hear the dishwasher going in the background. Your feet are tucked up. Maybe you have a beverage by your side. Maybe the TV's going on in the background, but you're on your phone and you're scrolling. What is the content that stops your scroll? Think about it. What stopped your scroll? Getting sold to? Seeing that there's a product sale? Seeing a very classic ad, despite how pretty it is? Is that the thing that's stopping you? Or is it something personal? Chances are you're getting stopped by seeing something engaging by way of a human. In fact, studies show that 64% of Instagram posts that have a human in the post, we're not talking about the copy, I'm not talking about the way it's shot, it's just 64% will have a higher percent of engagement because there's a human in, in it. So humans are attracted to other humans, but when we come to business, we're like, oh no, 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 we, we can't, we can't show ourselves. But why? Because the best performing posts that I have posted on behalf of my business actually have very little to do with my business. So the objective for you and I is to find the right balance. Should, do I think that you should become a full-time influencer on behalf of your business? No. In fact, I say I'm not an influencer. People will often introduce me as, oh, Jasmine Sarsh is an influencer. And I go out of my way to correct people. I am not an influencer. I am an entrepreneur with influence. I believe that with all of my heart, that we all have the capability of influencing people, but the way that we get people on our side, the get, way that we get people as part of our mission or our purpose, the way that we get people into a community is by clearly conveying who we're about, who we serve, and the team that we're doing with. In fact, this is just like a sneak peek. It was a reel that it was like me, my husband, baby, we did a transformation. It's one of the best performing reels and had nothing to do with my business, but it's a balance between showing a transformation in my home, a transformation transformation in my life and then creating a parallel with a transformation in my business. Now, before people say, well, that, that's great. That works for you. I'm here to tell you that the way that I coach people is the way I'm coaching you right now. Listen, we are about, I think, 14, 15 minutes into this conversation. 18? Well, thanks, y'all. Thanks. Everyone's like, Jasmine, we're dying. Listen, we're 18 minutes in this conversation. If you're still here with me, I'm saying something that resonates with you. You're either so pissed and annoyed, be like, I, this girl, who does she think she is? I'm a part-time, like, bad car with a pipe that's broken in the back. Okay, that's you. If you're here, I'm just as happy you're here. I love the skeptics. Continue to ask why. Continue pushing me forward and continue asking f questions that other people are afraid to ask. Challenge me because I'll come correct. I believe in this stuff. I coach people just like Nicole. Nicole came in and was just like, kind of like, yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure. And then boom, this method is working for her because she shared something that she thought was a little bit weird, like three facts and three secrets about my business. And she had great engagement, but she got three sales on the back of a post. Kaylee came into a coaching session just last month and Kaylee does refurbished furniture. She buys furniture from thrift stores or flea markets and then she brings it in and she paints it, she sands it, she makes it her own. She's making her own content, right? Her own products based on somebody else's trash. And she came in and she was like, Jasmine, nobody wants to know about me. They just want to buy the product. And I'm like, well, how, how, how good are sales going for you? And she's like, um, well, I would really like to see them increase. I'm a full-time firefighter 
and then her side hustle is refurbishing furniture and she's wondering how can I turn this side hustle into a full-time thing so I said Kaylee you need to show the before and after ah what is the before and after what's the behind the scenes that's a caption category and she's like I don't know how because people want to buy the product and he said great let's insert a carousel start off with the end product carousel scroll over to the first part of the product, like the untouched part, the, the beer of a product that you found in the thrift store, scroll over again and just do a time lapse of you sanding and you painting. And what people saw is everything Kaylee did from beginning, middle and end. And she's like, I don't think it's gonna work. I'm gonna try it. So the next time, this is, I literally got this DM last week. She said, Jasmine, I did what you said from our coaching session. I posted, I went live and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go live and I'm gonna show you how I sand this. And then she did a time lapse. She posted a post and less than 24 hours, it was sold. She didn't even take it from her workshop to the storefront. She sold it before she had a chance to move it. Almost $1,000 in less than 24 hours. Did she do anything different than simply document the journey? She's having a hard time selling something. She just goes through all broken, janky, here's my Instagram live, and then she sells something. Do you have the humility to transform something for $1,000 in 24 hours by documenting your process? At Social Curator, we want to make it easy for you to build trust. Social Curator is not about, here's a hack. We're about a strategy, but here's the thing about strategies and the difference between a hack. A hack is a trick that maybe you could use to infuse a little bit of growth, but then you gotta keep on hacking your way and then people begin to call you a hack. Social Curator has strategy, but strategy only works when you work. We do not provide a pill. We provide the framework, the way, and the tools. So we have someone like Michelle, her first 18 days, we're not even talking about three weeks, she used six caption templates, she got unstuck, and she gained 128 new followers. 128 new followers that were primed to be customers. Diana used Social Curator and she planned her social content and all of a sudden she starts creating content with a strategy and then Airbnb reached out to her and said, we really like the content you're creating because she's creating content for other Airbnb hosts and now she's collaborating with Airbnb in creating content. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into some Q&A. Let's dive into what are the strategies that we could start building to deploy these very principles. Now, we started the conversation with your first nine posts on social media, right? Okay, cool, we're there. Then we got into like the caption categories. Then we got into why there's too many people who do what you do, baby. The way that you stick out and point of differentiation is by positioning yourself as an industry authority. And the only way that you position yourself as an industry authority is when you create content and you're like, it takes me so long or we can just framework. It's not important to you. If then you decide, no, it is important to me. Then we index where we put our time. And then everyone's like, I don't have enough time. Well, great. Well, what would it look like if you showed up with this strategy? That's where we're at right now. And that leads us to q and I feel like I came in, my energy was so strong today. Like y'all come prepared. Okay, um, these questions are coming in live. We are recording this live on Facebook. This video will turn into micro clips on Instagram as well as YouTube. So we're gonna get this party started. I don't know any of the questions in advance. Um, Inez, I'm not really good at taking pictures. What are my first simple steps to work on my skills. So Inez, you can go to jasminestar.com forward slash branding. Inside of this branding opt-in, we have a guide, how to take better pictures of yourself and or how to take better pictures in general. Understanding principles of photography, it will work. If you know how to find good light that's good for a selfie, it's good for a product. If you know how to position your body or position an item, it's good for product photography and self photography. Jasminestar.com forward slash branding, that'll give you a guide to get first get started. Um, yet just yesterday on Instagram stories, I created a very short tutorial and I got a really great response. The girl, the girl like great response, I did it like literally in five minutes and I didn't even make it a reel because I was like, I don't, I'm not sure people are gonna care. So yesterday morning, my husband and my daughter, they go to the park and I realize I'm about to go live on Instagram. But what I would like to do is I like to take a cover photo before I go live. So when I post it to Instagram, there's a photo and not a weird screen grab of me talking when I'm live because you can never get a, your face looks funny. And so what I had to do was get a photo, but I didn't have anybody to take a photo of me. So what I did is I set up my camera on a tripod. I went to the hands-free feature on Instagram. 
hands-free, and then the video started recording itself. And then all I did was I went back and I had, I, I, I like jumpsuits, yesterday I wore a jumpsuit too. I had my hand in my pocket, I crossed my arms, I paused, I pointed, I paused. In a 15 second clip, I paused three times, I downloaded the video, I went into my phone app, and then I just paused the video. I just paused it. I took a screen grab, because the video, if you take a screen grab, it becomes a photo. And then I took the photo and I put it in Instagram stories and I added text, Instagram live with Jasmine Star. I posted that as a tutorial yesterday and there were so many people who were like, I never thought of that. So what comes simple for me is an indication of what my place of power is. And what comes simple to you is an indication of what your place of power is. It's not enough for me to sit in my place of power on a little mushroom in the woods being like, my place of power is teaching content creation and to make people money. Me sitting on a mushroom in the forest does nothing for anybody else. And you, knowing that your place of power, if you're not creating content to show your, showcase your place of power, people don't know it's your place of power. So you're sitting alone in a mushroom in the woods and what I wanna do is I wanna get a lot of mushrooms in a lot of woods and the way that I do that to be a garden, like a mushroom gardener is by sharing what I know. And that's just it. Okay, Savannah, I'm a dog portrait and dog sport event photographer. From a previous video of Jasmine's, I know to build my email list, I must offer a free gift. What can I offer as a dog photographer? So let's bring everybody up to speed. Savannah is asking, I'm a firm believer. Listen, what am I talking about? Social media. But I'm not a one trick pony, nor am I a one trick puppy. Hey, Savannah. I do lots of things to drive conversations. I never put all of my eggs in one basket. I love Instagram. Instagram could disappear tomorrow. I don't have a business built on Instagram. I am building a business help with help from Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, my newsletter list, my podcast, being a guest, being a public speaker. I have all of these marketing mechanisms that are pointing to somewhere specific. Now, what I say is I like to diversify the way that my marketing efforts work. So I like to get people to give me their email address. Look what I just did. The very first question somebody said, how do I take better photos? Oh, I had a cache of a resource that I could offer by somebody signing up to get that free resource and they signed up with their email address. So Savannah's like, Jasmine, I want to diversify my marketing efforts. I'm a dog and event photographer, but in order for somebody to give me their email address, I need to give them in something in return, correct? To which I respond, yes, because nobody's gonna give you their email address without anything in exchange. So Savannah, you could do something very traditional. A lot of companies will say, oh, um, sign up for my free newsletter list so that you get 10% off your next photography shoot. But oftentimes, somebody isn't ready quite yet to make that investment with you. They first need to know that you know what you're doing. So Savannah, think back. I'm just gonna throw a few ideas out here. Now, Savannah is a dog portrait photography, a photographer, and there's other people who are like, I don't do that. No problem, but listen to the principles that I'm advising Savannah. Savannah knows things about the event photography world for dogs. She goes to a competition and I'm guessing, I have no idea what she does, but I'm guessing that she's gonna go to a dog show where it's like the particular breeds get awards or there's, there's agility tests. So if she goes and she, she takes photos of these events, she knows what the best dogs are doing. What kind of travel bags do they have? What kind of hair brushes? Do they bring their own washing bin? Do they have an agility coach on site? Do they, are the dogs wearing a warm up jacket? I have no idea. So Savannah, based on your insights, from you watching the industry, you're not a dog coach or a dog owner who's having a dog compete. You're a photographer, but as a photographer, what do you see? You're documenting, you're looking, what's going on here? What's making all this work? Then I want you to get your knowledge and information to position yourself as an industry authority and like the top 10 things you need to take to your for your dog on the next competition. And someone's like, wow, this Savannah girl, she must be a coach. And all you say is, hi, I'm Savannah. I'm a competitive pet photographer. I have been on the biggest networks. I have taken photos of the best dogs. And what are you doing in this freebie? Putting your photos of dogs, like you're putting your artwork, you're creating a free marketing resources of your talent. And what are you doing? You're sharing. From my experience, I have seen that the best dogs come with one, two, three, four, five. If I ever see you at a future event, please go out of your way to say hi. I can maybe snag a photo of you and your pup. What are they doing? Follow me here on Instagram or Facebook. So what you're going to need is a way for you to capture somebody's email address. 
And so this is where you have an email service provider. Like, and here's the thing, I don't get a kickback. I, I'm not an advocate of any one company. You can use MailChimp, Entreport, um, Infusionsoft. There's a bunch of different ways for you to get somebody's email address. You get somebody's email address, you send them the resource, and now you have the ability to email them in the future. So just think about this, Savannah, and anybody else who's there. Somebody signs up for your newsletter list, and let's say there's this big competition for Yorkshire Terriers in uh, Kentucky. You can send an email calling all Yorkies in Kentucky. That's the email. Now, if I get that email and I don't have a Yorkie, I might not open it. But if I have a Yorkie and I happen to live in the Kentucky area, I'm gonna open this email and you're like, hi, it's Savannah. You and I connected by way of my free 10 tips. I'm gonna be at the Yorkshire Terrier Open in Kentucky. I'd love to see you there. If you'd like to set up a session or contract me to document your dog, let me know. I mean, come on, y'all, come on, okay. Uh, did we finish there? Does that feel like it's like, because that was a long question. That was a long answer. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm getting over a cold that I'm not quite getting over. The cold is getting over on me. Um, okay. Jackie Brooks, I'm a brand photographer and I've been working with businesses, but trying to branch out and getting into the wedding industry. What would you recommend I should do first in order to build wedding clientele? Jackie, I think that you should be a second photographer for as many first photographers as possible. In fact, if you're really serious about the craft of understanding what a wedding takes, I personally think, and yes, I'm biased, I personally think that every human in the world should be a wedding photographer because then you know how to make magic from nothing. You know how to work in the hardest situations of all times with a bunch of drunk people who act like white kittens in a snowstorm, and then you're supposed to create and document the most perfect, beautiful, wonderful day of anybody's life with no pressure at all, and guess what? It's 12 p.m., there's dark circles under everybody's eyes, everyone's sweating profusely, and the bride and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the flower girl lost a shoe in the middle of the aisle. Good luck. If you want to get in that game, consider yourself warned, and then shoot for other photographers. You will be unparalleled. You will not, you will have zero doubt on how to get into the industry after second shooting six weddings. You will have zero doubt. I could tell you and you're going to do it, but it's not going to work because you haven't been enough in the game. Ooh. All right, man. People are like, I'm never coming to this girl's class again. She's so mean. Listen, I love people. Uh, my dad is a Marine. I was raised like there's just no room for excuses. You either do the work or you don't. You fall on your, you scrape your knee. My dad would tell me no blood, no pain. Breathe right through it. And I'm like, okay, dad. That's how I'm in business. That's how I'm like, are you broken? Because if you ain't broken, get up and walk. Uh, Shadeen. As a career strategist just starting out, what could my behind the scenes be? A boomerang of my computer and a resume on the screen? Sure, sure. That and 1,287 other ideas. But you're not gonna know what's going to resonate. And you wanna know what, Shadeen? I could tell you, oh my God, girl, that's the best idea I've ever heard. And you're gonna do it and it'll suck. And I could say, oh, you want, you want to know what, LaQuisha? That's the best idea I've ever heard. And she does the same thing. You guys could do the same boomerang with a computer and a resume, and then nobody responds to yours. Each of you each have like 150 followers. So Shadeen has 150 followers, and Shadika has 150 dollars followers, and you guys both do the same boomerang, and then all of a sudden, nobody's commenting or liking on yours, and everybody's liking and commenting, and then you think, it must be me. No, it's not. It's just your market. It's just who you're attracting. As a career, as a career strategist, you might be attracting people who have PhDs and JDs and MBAs, and they ain't interested in a boomerang. And Shanika could be a career strategist for people who are fashion influencers moving into the podcasting game. So they're like, oh my God, this is so cool. It's so great. That's not your audience. It doesn't mean you're not good or your content's not great. It's just, you're just gonna spend some time figuring out what they want. And the only way people figure out what their audience wants is by doing a lot of work. So before you have an opinion about a boomerang, a resume, and a computer, you need to do about 500 boomerangs for you to understand where your audience lies. Man, is somebody trying to get me off camera? Because I feel like I, maybe I just need to take like a deep breath. Amber Miller, I flip houses and have a decent following, but I get very little engagement on any post or reel. The ones I get the most likes are the before and afters, but there's only so many captions to use. Any suggestions? Yes, Amber Miller, what I hear from you, I'm sorry, I need to take a breath. 
I come in so hard because I'm just like, oh my God, Amber Miller and anybody else in Amber's situation of, I know what gets the most engagement. My audience is speaking to me, but there's only so many things I could say, to which I respond, that's patently false. But what we say becomes our reality. A belief is simply a thought you think again and again and again. A belief is a thought that you think again and again. So if you say, I've run out of things to say, guess what, it's true. And if you say, I just need to find a new way to say the things that I have been saying again and again, guess what, you're right. So as a house flipper for before and afters, ooh, the camera just shifted, Mar. Well, we, we back? Dang, son, that was fast. Like, he's like, camera shift, camera back. Uh, this is like Fast and Furious videography out here. Okay, so. If you know the content that works, and if you're trying to say the same thing in different ways, I'm going to invite you to start a free trial on the inside of Social Curator, socialcurator.com forward slash trial. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get access to caption templates that you can modify. And, and six out of the seven caption templates have nothing to do with your, with your career. When it says showcase your product or service, you could showcase your home flipping. Guess what? You can use the exact same before and after photo and give a behind the scenes. That's a before and after. You can talk about your why. Nothing makes you more lit up than walking into a house that somebody has previously overlooked and forgot about to make it something new. I got into the game because I know what it takes to look at something old and forgotten and make it something new. Something that's encouraging. Do you ever feel like you're a broken bathroom and spouts pouting everywhere and you don't think that there's a promise of it? Wouldn't it look, would it, what would it look like to become this spa-like bathroom? Everybody needs a little bit of change. So here we are encouraging you to see this before and after of a bathroom and reminding you that everything is a work in progress. We did not take an old bathroom and make it new in one day. It took us months. Just like that transformation exists on this toilet, tub, and sink, it exists with us. I'm sorry, I can go all day every day because honey, you are sitting in front of a buffet with an empty plate saying, I don't know what to choose. I've eaten everything from the buffet. Put the things on your plate and move on. Okay, I'll just end right there. Whatever I drank this morning, I need to not drink again. Next week, I'm gonna show up all like warm and fuzzy and kind. Uh, today, it was a little bit of arse kicking and I'm here for it. I hope you go out and I hope you take action. More so, I hope to see you on the inside of Social Curator. Blessings, much love, take care y'all.